Good afternoon, Year 4, and welcome to our arithmetic lesson this afternoon. Hopefully you have had a go at the arithmetic paper, and I'm just going to take you through those last four questions so we can see if we can improve upon our scores. I know a lot of you that I have seen have been doing an amazing job on your arithmetic paper, and your scores have been improving every week, which is fantastic. So we are going to look at questions 22 to 25 together. Question 22. Now this was also our maths lesson today. So let's see how we would solve 8 times by 3 times by 4. Now of course, like we've looked at before, there are multiple ways I can do this. With multiplication, it does not matter what order I times things in. So I could do 8 times 3 thirds. I could do 3 times 4 thirds. Or I could do 8 times 4 thirds. Often it's just best to think about which you think would be easier. Now I think for me that if I were to do 3 times 4 thirds, that would be easier. I know what 3 times 4 is and I know it's going to give me a small enough answer that I can confidently then multiply that by the 8. So what is 3 times 4? Well, we either know our three times tables or our four times tables. I'm really good at my threes, so I'm going to count in my threes. Three, six, nine, twelve. So we've got three times four is twelve. So I've multiplied these two numbers together. What do I need to times that by now? Well done if you said I now need to multiply that by eight. So I need to do 12 times 8. Now for lots of you, you will be very confident with your 12 or 8 times tables already. I find these ones a little bit harder, so I'm going to break it down a bit more for myself. I'm going to do 10 times 8, and then I'm going to do the 2 times 8 to help me. I know 10 times 8 because I'm really confident with my 10 times tables. 10 times 8 is, of course, 80. And I'm really good at my 2 times tables. 2 times 8, double 8. Well, that's 16, isn't it? So this can help me to work out 12 times 8 if I find that a little bit tricky. Now, these two numbers I just need to add together. Hopefully, you'll get the right answer for 12 times 8. Okay, question 23. 55 times by 6. 55 multiplied by 6. Now, there are actually a couple of ways I thought to do this. The first way I'll show you is the way that we normally multiply. So if I'm doing 55 multiplied by 6, I'm going to start by partitioning that 55. I'm going to partition it into the... 50, and I'm going to partition it into the 5. So rather than 55 times 6, I've got the 5 times 6 and the 50 times 6. 5 times 6. Well, I'm very good at my 5 times tables. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, how can I use this to help me work out 50 times 6? Ah, I can see it's just 10 times bigger, 10 times bigger. Okay, that's going to be 300. So 5 times 6 is 30, 50 times 6 is 300. And then, of course, just like on our last question, we just need to add these two together. That's the way we've looked at lots before, but I thought I would just show you quickly how you might have solved this problem in your head. Now, rather than doing it using the column method, I actually used a different method in my head to solve this one. Now, I knew that 55 times 2 was 110. That's just a multiplication that I happen to know. I know that 50 times 2 is 100, 5 times 2 is 10. So 55 times 2, double 55, I knew that was 110. But I don't want 55 times 2. I want 55 times 6. Well, I knew that if 55 times 2 was 110, 
65 times 4 must be 210. 220, sorry, I just doubled it. So in that case, surely 55 times 6, we look at the pattern, must be 330. So that's how I solve that problem in my head. Okay, question 24 is a subtraction and we're going to have to do some exchanging here. What column do I start with when I am subtracting? Ah, yes, I always start with my ones, don't I? Two, take away five. Oh no, already I can't do it. I cannot do two, take away five. So what am I going to do? Ah, that's right. I haven't got enough ones. I'm going to have to exchange one of my tens. I won't have nine tens now. I'm going to have eight tens. I'm going to exchange one of my tens for ten ones. So now I've actually got twelve ones. Twelve ones take away five ones is seven ones. Oh, this one looks very easy for us now. Eight take away zero. How quickly can you do eight take away zero? Well done if you said eight. Five take away one. Four and six thousand take away three thousand gives us three. We just have to really make sure with these kind of questions that we look carefully at that exchanging. And our last one, so very similar to question 23, we're multiplying, but this time I'm multiplying a three digit number. That doesn't change too much really, apart from that we will have three numbers to add together. Okay, we're going to start as always by partitioning. What am I going to partition 273 into? Have a go and see if you can partition that. Well done, if you said we would partition 273 into 273 and 3. Now, three times three. Three, six, nine. Ah, three times three is nine. Seventy times three. Hmm. Now I know that seven times three is twenty-one. So seven tens times three would be twenty-one tens. So I know it's two hundred and ten. And then 200 times 3, well I know that 2 times 3 is 6, and then I've got to think about my 100, haven't I? So 200 times 3 must be 600, and then to be finished I just need to add these numbers together. Hopefully you are continuing to beat your score every week. If there are any questions in particular that you find a little bit tricky and you're not sure how to solve, please do send an email to me letting me know which ones they are and I will give you an explanation of how to solve those ones, okay? Keep up the super work.